Hello, I'm Shelby Brown with the Getty Villa in Malibu. I'm Guy Wheatley. And in honor of College Night at the Villa, we're going to show you how to drape a Roman toga, starting with an authentic toga, and ending with what you will probably run out of the house with, a sheet. Our Roman gentleman is wearing the first century ordinary man's formal citizen garb, required at most public occasions, and especially if the emperor were present. This is a poly blend, but it should be wool. It is 18 feet long, it is six, uh, 12 feet high, and it is folded in half. So he's essentially wrapped in a blanket. So he is standing here in a wool blanket. He's very hot and miserable, even though he's trying to look happy. Well, not now. And the poet Marshall commented on how much Roman men hated togas, describing how in the first century AD everyone loved to get out of Rome, escape lawsuits, escape their togas, and have peace of mind. The look of a toga should be dignified, so it couldn't fall off you. The wool helps the fabric stick to itself. There should be an expansive chest that looks dignified, a curve down to the knee, and a second curve below, falling above the foot. On the left side, where everything starts out when you're draping a toga, there is the point of one of the folds right above the left foot. So you start above the left foot, throw everything over your shoulder, bring it around behind you, throw it over your shoulder again. The left shoulder has a very heavy, weighty mass of fabric running down over the arm, so he can't really move very well. He's stuck in one position. The right arm can move more freely to be emotional and excited as required. The wool helps this fabric from falling down. The Romans were not supposed to pin or sew their togas, but we suspect they sometimes did and we urge that you do that so that you will be comfortable during your visit. Um, especially if you use a slick fabric, you will have to do that or your fabric will slither right off you right away. Unwrapping our citizen at the end of his long day would require several slaves to keep the fabric clean, but as you can see, it started out here, went over the shoulder, came around, went over again. We're unwrapping him and you'll see the length of the toga. If you're going to use a sheet to make a toga, the problem with the sheet is that it is a rectangle, so it doesn't quite work. But you want to take a twin or a full sheet if you don't want to have any bulk on you. Uh, it will be too short, but it will be comfortable. If you use a king sheet, it will get a little bulky and probably not feel as good. You want to start with it behind you and the short ends on either side. Grab a point and make the point of the corner fall down over your knee a little bit. On this other side, you want to grab the short end and try to create a curve that mirrors the curve for the gentleman we were just watching. And Throw that over your shoulders so that you have some curves. Romans sometimes did this with their elbows. You can do that. You can throw it over and make a great expanse of curvature under your arm so that you can manipulate. And then you have a much too short but authentically draped garment that you can pin at the shoulder and that you can avoid tripping over. 